Hi, my name is Tabata Telles and I'm here to present uh, Framing Spirituality in Martial Arts and Embodied Comprehension through Phenomenology. Uh, I'm a postdoc researcher at the University of Sao Paulo and at the University of Paris and I'm currently the president of the Brazilian Association of Sports Psychology. Uh, first, I don't know if everyone's familiar with the word phenomenology, so I'm, I'm going to explain a little bit about it. So I see phenomenology here as a background and method. Uh, so phenomenology is uh, a, ph a philosophical and methodological point of view. And it means that we are comprehending each phenomenon from its own structure through lived experiences. So it is rather a way or an attitude, a particular lens through which we can view the world and the phenomena around us. So uh, this is not purely a theory or even a procedure or tool in terms of uh, qualitative research, but uh, we must see phenomenology as an attitude uh, towards a philosophical and methodological point of view. So it's an approach guided by the concept of bracketing, which means an attitudinal stepping back from our taking for granted assumptions of the world. So it's a way to uh, have a, a particular method to access the phenomenon. So we start from lived experiences to try to find, to try to grasp an extra, an extra structure uh, among all these experiences but to do it we must step back from things that we already know from this phenomenon so for example uh, here i'm studying spirituality so in a phenomenological way i need to step back from things that i know and what i think spirituality is so i need to check on uh some sort of descriptions from others from other materials from questioning and thinking about this phenomenon so we have different ways to approach it but uh in some we must step back from these taken from granted assumptions uh that's the term of bracketing so uh, description is fundamental to a phenomenological research in order to uh, highlight these structures and the phenomenon we are investigating. Uh, when it comes to phenomenology and fighting practices, uh, we must comprehend fighting practices in reflexive and pre-reflexive way. Later on, I'm going to explain it a little bit more. Uh, while fighting, the body constantly moves and there's not much time for the practitioner to reflect before choosing and doing each technique. Uh, this, this has to say, uh, this has something to say about intentionality, which is that a movement is not only related to what we think, but also to what we can do in the world and through it. So when we're talking about, for example, spirituality in fighting practices, it means to say that this is not only an absolute thing. Uh, when I feel guided uh, through some sort of spiritual uh, perception or feeling, it means that it's towards something. So I can feel this sort of spirituality and as I perceive it, I act in a different way. So. Uh, a, a movement, it's never randomly executed, but it's always related to an object and to the world, even if we're not conscious of it. It's, it's always engaged, to an, engaged in a specific situation. Uh, when we're approaching fighting practice, I have already said the word perce perception, which is to say that perception is already an action, so we think on perception action processes, uh, in which a sensible perception is not necessarily conscious. The body is in action before being conscious of it. So a perception is our first way to access the world. The world It is from the perception that the body starts to move. So we always rely on things that we perceive in the way, in the way we perceive. Uh, we're not able to see the entire object when we perceive this object. We can recognize it and put it together as a relief, which enables our actions from apparently separated information. So from hearing, seeing, touching, etc. 
Uh, so we're not only perceiving the object, but also in a specific situation. So we are able to do something in a certain time and space and situation. Uh, another interesting aspect, aspect in fighting practices is the sense of otherness. Uh, we have here perception and the role of the opponent. The opponent enables each one of us to deal with unexpected situations. When fighting, even mastering a lot of techniques, we constantly face what we cannot control or predict because we are always dealing with someone else. Fighting is then a dynamic process of letting the body act from previous learned movements while being presented to, presented to an unexpected situation from the opponent. The experience of spirituality is related to the feeling of helplessness while facing otherness. Because otherness, when I face otherness, I face something that I cannot control. So I feel, I feel some sort of helplessness while dealing with these unpredictable situations. So spirituality is a way to be uh, more powerful, to deal with it. Uh, when we're learning, uh, when we're learning a, a new move, we have the formation of a body schema. Body schema can be defined as certain motor capacities, abilities, and habits that both enable and constrain movement and the maintenance of posture. It continues to operate and in many cases operates best when the intentional object of perception is something other than one's own body. Uh, this is uh, very important when we are moving from learning a movement to have a, ha a habit of moving in a certain way. Uh, when we are learning something, when we are learning a different activity, a different technique, we pay attention, for example, uh, we pay attention to our legs, to our arms. Uh, but when we, we have this habit, when we are familiar with this movement, then we can pay attention to the other. So the other helps the body to generate something new from what it already knows how to do, challenging the body schema and developing motor capacities and ab abilities. So I can kick, but it's different when I'm doing it at home when I'm in, than when I'm trying to kick my opponent. The opponent gives me the opportunity to have a, a, a more unpredict situation for me to deal with. So body schema is a marginal awareness of the body as we do not usually access it, although it is always there. Uh, I don't keep thinking all the time of how I walk, for example, but I walk. So it, it's uh, this kind of marginal awareness that I'm considering. And here we have, uh, finally, the phenomenon of habit. So a habit is not an automatism nor a conscious knowledge, but it is tied to a bodily intelligence. It's the habit that enables further actions in a motor or imperceptive way. Then first we learn a movement and then we get the ability and we are challenging, we're challenged a lot of times in terms of body schema until we have a habit, we're familiar with it. So even when we are facing a challenge, if our body is uh, familiar with this move, it will go. I can fight, even if we're dealing with different situations. Some notes to summarize, uh, notes on, in, on martial arts and combat, combat practices as embodied practices, martial arts and combat sports as embodied practices. A practice to be embodied must be lived by the body, not only through the explanation of techniques, as I was saying, uh, it's not only a matter of learning the techniques, but how you experience it and how you deal with it. Uh, enabling the bodies to be challenged, challenged not only to learn or master a technique, but also to generate new perceptions and movements in the situations we're in. Then, one can only learn how to fight when fighting. Uh, and embodied practices are often embodied practices are often related to pre-reflexive processes. Uh, later on, I'm going to explain a little bit more uh, about this difference on pre-reflexive processes and the reflexive ones. When we're framing spirituality in terms of pre-reflexive act, what does it mean? 
So here we have main concepts to promote this understanding. The first one is the concept of body and the experience of fighting as a corporal fight. Uh, first, what I'm considering here, body, is it, it comes from a tradition in phenomenology, which is that body is not only an object, but also a subject. So when we are fighting, what's the main purpose of fighting? I try to hit my opponent, I try to control or to grapple or to refrain. Uh, I try to do something in terms of controlling or hitting the opponent. But at the same time, I know this person is trying to do the exact same thing with me. So this is a, a very uh, interesting explanation for us to understand how the body can be uh, an object because someone can hit me, my body, but it, it is also my body that enables me to fight, to look at the other. And when we're considering the experience of fighting as a corporal fight, what it is to say uh, that we are considering a corporal fight? When we're fighting, uh, we have uh, a big diversity. We can fight as a brawl, we can fight as a duel, we can fight in a playful way. But even if we're assuming these different ways of fighting, there is, uh, as I was telling that for phenomenology, it's very important to try to grasp the structure. There is a common structure, a main purpose there. And this main this main purpose is exactly try to hit or control the other or to grapple depending on the modality and at the same time the other one is trying to do the same thing with me so from this main point from this this key point uh, which we are considering a corporal fight we can go to different nuances in fighting processes and it's important to say that we are also considering a sensible norm for example when we are kids and we are playing as a fight uh, we don't have rules these are not sportive rules but i feel that if i do something i can hurt my friend so i don't do it so it's some kind of sensible norm it's it's a, it's a norm which is established uh, as we are sensitized towards the other so even if we have obviously we have social standards but even with these social standards the uh, this person can have a, a different cultural background a different social background a different uh, life story but even though if if i can be guided through the sensible norm i can sometimes modulate the way i'm fighting a perception action process, uh, a body schema, as I have already told you, and the habit. In here, just to make it clear, <laughs> I'm also considering uh, martial arts as uh, an embodied practice, which is to say that we cannot split mind, body, soul, and whatever we are considering it here. Uh, when we're talking about spirituality in martial arts, we, we must also consider reflexive acts, which is a reflection on the unreflecting. Because I have already told you that uh, spirituality can be seen as a very strong feeling that leads me to something. And I'm not entirely conscious of it. But to identify as such, I must reflect on, on it. But how to reflect so it's a matter of time and space what is the object 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 of reflection is it uh spirituality okay but where to reflect in my dojo or at home when uh this is important maybe this is obvious for some of you but in my experience some in my experience sometimes i see people uh saying that we must keep reflecting on our acts, on our movements, but it's not the same time you're moving, you're trying to reflect on your move. No, it's before or after. You have to let your body do the work and then you think about it. And how to reflect. Uh, here I bring describing and storytelling as a way to learn and enhance self-knowledge. So if we're considering spirituality, what does it mean for you? How can you describe it? How can you identify and understand it? 
then framing spirituality in martial arts, we can do it through the relationship between subjects and things which are considered as meaningful to enable and enhance such embodied practices. This is related to perception and habit. And here we are sensing spirituality through reflexive and pre-reflexive acts. Spirituality in martial arts, uh, it means that one may not be conscious, even as feeling guided by something called here as meaningful to a specific movement or practice. On the other hand, if there's no reflection about these acts, they won't be identified as such. And here I bring uh, something related to uh, some sort of phenomenology of spirituality in martial arts, which is, it's so strong I can't describe phenomenon. Spirituality is often related to something intangible, strong enough to enable further and meaningful actions. Uh, it's a way of emptying oneself, as we have in the literature in karate, or sensing the music and the magic, as we have also in the literature uh, in capoeira. But when I'm considering this, it's so strong, I can't describe feeling. It's related to a research I did uh, during my PhD among uh, karate, capoeira and MMA practitioners. And it was interesting because mainly in capoeira it happened a lot. And once I remember I was doing, I was conducting, conducted, conducting an interview and I was sitting in a bench, on a bench, uh, far from the hoda, the circle, the capoeira circle. And then the interviewer started to tell me, okay, but now that I, because the, the music started to get louder and louder. And then the guy said, oh, it's so strong that it's making me go there. It seems that we are inside a circle. It's some kind of magic. It's so strong that I can't describe, but I want to do it. So uh, somehow the person feels more powerful to do this something. Uh, this spirituality is experienced as a perception action process and unrecognizable force that leads us to something. As a conclusion, spirituality is lived as a I do it and I can describe phenomenon which is powerful and dangerous. Spirituality and religion, religious ideologies can be considered as embodied features that are strong enough to enable movements, movements and behaviors even without reflection. This is why I say that as it's powerful and sometimes not conscious, it can be dangerous if we not reflect on it. Such, such particular aspect reveals that they can be powerful tools to movement practices and cannot be separated from social, moral, ethical and practical values. Continuous attention needs to be paid to this phenomenon once it can relate either to peacemaking processes or individualized and violent ones. And finally, I guess that this study can be fruitful to further investigations on martial arts, phenomenology and spirituality. So I thank you all. And I feel, a, I feel a little bit sorry because English is not my native language, but then we can discuss later on on this topic if you have any questions here, we have my contacts.